How's it going lads? Welcome to a particularly cold morning here in the garage. Back during lockdown I went through a mad phase where I was buying all sorts of tools and one of the things I found most of was chisels. I really like the high quality, the old Sheffield steel so. So anytime I saw chisels of the sort, I just bought them. And oftentimes, like in this chisel here's case, they didn't come with a handle included. So I committed the mortal sin of going onto Amazon and buying a rake of handles and just banging them on. Not even sure what style this handle is, but I never really liked it. But I had means to turn my own handles. So now that we do, I think I'm gonna try redeem myself and turn a handle for this. Now, a few years back, I did try replicate a handle out of ash. Uh, so this was just using, I suppose, sandpaper and chisels. And uh, do you know what? I did an okay job, I reckon. But um, hopefully now we can set up the pole aid and do a much better job than this one and give this beautiful old Marples and Sons chisel a whole new life. So this is the first time I've set the whole thing up since it was taken down after it was first built. And the, the tenons up here after getting wet, they were left outside, and they're after expanding, so they're, they're a lot more difficult to actually insert into the mortise here. You can see there now, the first time they just slid right in, there was a good bit of resistance there, but uh, yep, we got it there in the end. Now all we need to do is just bang the whole thing together. Come on! So once we had the pole aid set up and ready to go, it was time to pick out a piece of wood. Uh, this is a piece of ash that I've had drying up in the loft for about two years. So as you can see, it's uh, a bit too long. So I just pulled out the cross cut saw there and um, cut it to length. So when we were done with the saw, I was able to put it away in the lid that we constructed in the last episode. Very satisfying just to have all your tools right in front of you, easily accessible and lock away and fall down when you're done with them. So the piece isn't exactly round to begin with, it's kind of like pizza slice shape because it was split from a trunk. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come along with our hatchet here and we're just going to start about halfway down, make sure our fingers are nice and high so we don't chop them off. And just kind of spend a while just hacking it all back, getting it somewhat round. It'll make our job a lot easier when we bring it onto the lathe. So here we have the ash now, I think it's ready for the lathe. Right, so we're here now with the lathe and I want to put this thing in place. So the first thing I want to do is use this wedge to lock this fella nice and secure in place. Then I'm going to bring the workpiece up to this part of the chuck here and then move this fella with my hand until he's close enough. And then I'm going to bring it back out. Lock this fella into place here. Loosen the handle on this side a bit, just like so. Then we can bring our workpiece back up again, then twist like this and lock her into place. So first of all I like to go pretty tight and then I loosen it a bit and then that should spin nice and quickly. Now that that's in place I need to worry about setting up the actual pole part of the lathe. So there it is now, you can see it sticking out there in the top corner of the screen and uh, all I did was attach a rope from that wind it around the workpiece we just put in and then attach it to a foot pedal here. Now I was using sisal because I prefer using natural materials where possible but um, it was too thin and it kept on breaking so I need to find some thicker sisal or maybe hemp rope or some other good natural material. I just don't like using polyester rope. So once we had everything set up and ready to go once more it was time to start turning the piece so I have a gouge there now that I was using to take off the high spots. Now the trick to pole aid turning I found is that you can only cut when you're kind of pushing down with your foot. So you kind of have to slowly, um, subtly pull the chisel back uh, when the branch is pulling it back up. Uh, so that was just something that took a bit of getting used to. But once we had gotten rid of all the high spots, it was grand and easy to just take continuous shavings the whole way around the workpiece. So my first objective was to get the whole thing just round and then I could start working on the details. Something I'd been meaning to try as well was using sandpaper on this thing. Normally when you're working with green wood on these things, I, I don't think you can use sandpaper, it'd just be too wet. Uh, whereas this has had two years to dry, so this was bone dry. And uh, the sandpaper worked very effectively on it. And you can see there now, it's quite satisfying. So after I had done a bit of sanding, it was time to kind of do a bit of detailing. So I'm not too sure what the terminology for all these different types of shapes within the turned pieces. I should probably learn them. But there's kind of a groove there that fits your thumb when you're using the chisel. Uh, so we we're just cutting that out with the gouge. So I wanted to put a piece of copper piping around the end of this chisel handle. Just to stop it from splitting when we drive in the actual chisel itself. 
So I'm cutting out here with the gouge, just bringing this whole section here uh, down to the same diameter that I require. Once we had that back inside the garage then it was just a matter of cutting off all that big long excess with the coping saw. The next part was fairly fun. I left um, the end of the chisel kind of rough. Uh, I'll saw it off later and the reason I did that is because I know I'm going to use this metal ball peen hammer here to just bash the back of it into the copper pipe. This is probably the most fun part of the whole thing. Now the whole time as we were doing this the chisel was still stuck in its old beach handle that I got off Amazon so to remove that it was just a matter of inserting it into the vise and then giving it a few well placed whacks with the hammer until it came right off. Now even though we put that copper ring on it to stop it from splitting, if we drove it in as it was it would still crack along the handle so we do need to bore out a hole for it to sit into. Uh, it'll still be very tight but it needs the hole nonetheless so for that we're using this hand crank drill I restored not so long ago. So not finishing the bottom of the chisel also comes in handy when we're actually putting the handle on the chisel which is what we're doing here. So you can see there now we have the chisel just up on a piece of U I have on the table here and then we can just grab our hammer one last time and just bash that handle right all the way onto the chisel until the bottom of it is sitting flush with the actual wooden part. So once we have all that done we can finally remove the bottom so I'm just coming along here with a gent saw and we're just going to cut it flush nice and square at the very bottom and then I can finally sand around the edges and get that nice and smooth. Now I still haven't managed to find my bottle of linseed oil so unfortunately we have to use axe oil on this handle so just a quick drop of it and it'll probably do a similar enough trick. I really need to find myself a new bottle or get myself a sponsorship or something uh, but for now this will do. Seeing as I was going to all the trouble of putting a nice new handle on this chisel, I said I might as well put a new primary bevel on it, so I normally do most of my sharpening by hand, but I do have a Tormac, so I said I might as well use it. This Sheffield steel is very hard stuff, so instead of wearing myself out, I might as well put this machine to good use. So here we are now, so the bevel it's at right now is about 25 degrees, and then I'll come along after this and put a nice 30 degree secondary bevel on it. Well lads, here we have it now, good and sharp. I just took it to the strap wheel quick, and now we can see that it is shaving good and proper. Don't judge the socks, it's very cold here at the minute. Um, yeah, just lined up right, it will just shave hair, clean off our legs, so that's pretty much as sharp as I like to get all my chisels. But anyway, that's only about a thousand grit. So, great excuse to bring out the old hole laid. I'm fairly happy with this chisel now. Nice ash handle, It'll probably last me a couple of decades. Um, so yep, yeah, sound for watching and I'll talk to you again in the next one. Good luck.